fact, maybe I'll just take pictures of them tonight and send them to you. Oh, I got a, oh, shit, I had a bite. Oh, I got a fish on. Just stand the line, let's see what this is. This is not a trolling fly. Holy, holy mackerel, I, I lost it. Oh, I got one on the other rod. Oh, double hookup, holy mackerel. I'm fishing to the, uh, I'm talking to the publisher of the Fish Dipper Magazine, Paul Neeland here, and uh, gosh darn it, I don't know what to do. I, I, I forgot my net today. That's pretty good, Paul, you ever do that? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see what we can do with this fish. Um, this is on a copper uh, trigger spoon, Junior. So anyway, we'll see, I got him on my spinning rod. He's fighting, he's pulling me in a circle. I'm sure it's a planter rainbow or a bass. It's not a stick. <laughs> it's alive. Let's see what it is. And then I'll let you go. Here it is. It is. Oh, heck, it's a nice rainbow trout. Beautiful. Now I got to figure out how to land it without a net, but we'll get it. We'll get them. I'm going to wear it out. Well, I'll talk to you later, Paul. I'm going to wrestle this fish into the boat and I'll give you a call later. Now, I don't have a net, as I mentioned when I was talking to Paul. So I'm gonna, when you don't have a net, you kinda gotta wear the fish down. It's a very nice trout. I'm kinda assessing how well the fish is hooked. And I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna lift this fish because I think I got him pretty darn good. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Woo! Look at that. Right there, Trigger Spoon Jr. getting it done. That's a beautiful fish. Rollins Lake, no one else is in sight. I'm up here by myself. The water is very, very cold. It's about 43 degrees, but uh, those fish are near the surface and they're ready to go. So anyway, couldn't lay off that copper uh, Trigger Spoon Junior. I was trolling right at 1.8 miles an hour. So let's put that guy on the stringer and uh, get back to it, man. If I can catch a few more of those, I got the makings to a very nice limited trout. So I'm pretty stoked. Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here. I got both my lines back in the water. I'm kind of coming back into the area where I caught that rainbow, but I got a, a fish that's hit my trolling fly three times, so maybe he'll hook himself. Um, anyhow, this is a good time to talk about fishing strategy. Um, what am I doing today? Well, before I get into that, whenever you go fishing, you should have a strategy and you should have three plans. Your primary plan, we call that plan A. Your secondary plan, plan B. And your third plan, plan C, those are, those are your, your fallbacks, your confidence methods that you've put together based on the conditions you expect to see, based on your experience that you think are going to allow you to catch fish. Now, today, my plan A, I knew the water, the, this is what I knew about the lake. I knew it had been planted with rainbows about a month ago. I know there are holdover rainbows in the lake. I know there are wild rainbows in the lake that migrate between the river arms and the main lake, and you could find them in the main lake this time of the year. And there's also brown trout in the lake that spend a lot of time in the river arms, but move back and forth between the river and the main lake. I knew the water was gonna be cold. So I knew the, the rainbows, particularly the planters, were likely to be lethargic. And I knew, you know, Primarily, I'm targeting the planters today, although I'm gonna push up the Bear River Arm and see if I can get some holdover rainbows and maybe a big brown. But I knew, you know, first and foremost, I was gonna be targeting rainbows, but I also wanted to have something in the water that would appeal to browns. So with this water temperature, I said, you know, the fish may be lethargic. I need to slow down and I need to downsize at least my offering for the rainbows. So what I opted for was on my spinning rod, that's my, my rainbow planter rod, I'm running a copper Trigger Spoon Junior. Those run great between 1.6 and two miles an hour. My target speed today right now is 1.8. Um, I bump it up to two every once in a while. I drop it down to like 1.3. I kind of mix it up a little bit, but 1.8 is my primary speed. Now for brown trout in this lake, I've done well on three to four inch rainbow trout pattern Rapalas, trolling them fast. I didn't want to troll fast 
So I opted for the rainbow pattern fly, which will perform well at the same speed as the Trigger Spoon Junior. Now, as it's turned out, my plan A is working very well. I've got several hits on the trolling fly, which I think are our plan of rainbows that can't quite handle the size of it. And I caught a very nice rainbow on the Trigger Spoon. Now, my plan B was to break out the soft stuff. Gulp worms, gulp minnows, maybe a set of blades, and slow it down to one mile an hour. Um, I was even prepared to just troll a threaded crawler with no blades, no nothing, just slow roll that at about one mile an hour to deal with the cold water and the potentially lethargic fish. Now my plan C, which I may actually use today, I'm gonna push all the way up the Bear River Arm with the lures I'm pulling right now. But if I get up there and I haven't caught a fish, I'm gonna switch over to plugs. I'm gonna switch over to Rapala's. I'm gonna switch over to Maglips and I'm gonna troll very quickly on my way down, just hoping to hook a good sized brown. So those were my three plans today. Let's start off with spoons and flies at you know 1.8 miles an hour. See if I could pick up maybe a maybe a, a brown that was kind of you know in this area hanging out with the rainbows, but primarily I was targeting the planted rainbows. Um, if that didn't work, I was going to slow down even further, bake, break out the gulp, break out the real worms, stuff like that. Something that really stays in the strike zone, give them the feel, the appeal of real meat to to really turn those lethargic fish on, and. Uh, my final approach is power fishing with larger plugs, but with that, with that equation, I'm kind of taking the planter rainbows off the table and I'm just targeting the big fish, which can be really hit and miss at Rollins. I've caught browns here up to about seven pounds, but they can be few and far between. So I started out the day looking for planters. I've got one on the stringer. I'm gonna to try to put uh, two or three more with him. I'll have a, have a nice stringer of fish for the smoker and uh, then go hunting for some for some larger fish or maybe kind of stick around here and catch and release a little bit but the bottom line is i came here with a plan the plan is paying off and whenever you go fishing whether it's winter spring summer or fall you should have a primary plan and a couple fallback plans and uh, that's going to allow you to to catch fish pretty consistently throughout the year Anyway, that's my tip for today. I will catch you next time right here on YouTube, guys. I am Kel Kellogg, and if you're looking for trout tackle, if you're looking for some Trigger Spoon Junior, some trolling flies, stuff like that, click on over to the Fish Hunt Shoot Production Store. It's jammed full of great tackle at very fair prices, stuff I believe in, stuff I use out on the water. My stuff flat out performs. It's designed to catch fish, not fishermen. You see it here on the channel all the time. Anyway, I've blabbered enough. Get out on the water and catch some fish. Man, we got a great 2020 ahead. It's January. I'm already out here catching fish. So I'll see you next time right here on YouTube. What do you think, Lucy? All right. <laughs>